Whether you're somebody that's brand new to Lightroom or you already have a well-established workflow, today's video is going to show you six of my favorite techniques, tips, tricks, workflows, whatever you wanna call them, to help you guys to take better photos. My name's Austin James Jackson. I'm a professional landscape photographer based in Southern Utah. Really excited to show you guys some of my favorite techniques to use in Lightroom that I use for my landscape and wildlife images to help them look a lot better. These are techniques that are gonna work with many, many other types of photography as well. I don't want to waste any more time. Let's go ahead and jump right on over into Lightroom. All right, so the first thing that I want to talk about here um, is something that's pretty simple. I've covered it in a lot of other videos uh, in the past, but it is the profile here. Now, when you go and select the profile, you'll see you have a few options by default, and you can even hit browse and get more options. Essentially, this just tells Lightroom how it's going to essentially look at the raw file and how the colors are going and the light is going to be processed. By default, most photos are going to come in in Adobe Color. Um, and I would recommend if you want a little bit better and bolder colors right off the rip at the start of your photo edit to change this to Adobe Landscape or Adobe Vivid. Now, I don't always do this, but if I can remember, I like to do it. At the beginning of my edit, a lot of people will create a preset that automatically changes it for them. Um, but you can see when I change this off of Adobe Color, which is here, to Adobe Landscape, you can see the colors are just a little bit stronger. You can even do Vivid. Um, vivid, the colors are a little less strong, but you can see the difference between a Vivid and Color. It just kind of makes a little more contrasty of an image. So I like to do Adobe Landscape, a little bit better colors. That's just a nice way for me to get started. You can do this at the start of your edit or later, but I would re definitely recommend doing this before you get too deep into your edit, especially before you go through and edit colors. Now the second little trick that I like to use here involves masking. If you don't know how to use masking, I will link a video here that you can watch. Uh, this video isn't gonna cover completely how to use masking because there's a lot to it, more than we can cover in one single video here. Um, but you can check out that video if you do wanna learn how to use masking. If you already know how to use it or you somewhat know how to use it, then this will be perfect for you. So I like to select the linear gradient there, as you can see, and I like to just click and drag. Now I'm gonna use the linear gradient to shape light a little bit in my image. A lot of times, if the light's coming from the top, like it's going to be in most photos, I like the kind of bottom, the foreground, to create this nice, soft linear gradient. You can see how soft this is. Move this into place here and just drop that exposure. And you can play with it after um, you decrease the exposure and kind of dial it in. I'll create another new mask, do another linear gradient, maybe go from the side. Um, additionally, if you wanted, you could add the mask together. So I could click on this mask, click add, and then do add linear gradient. And I can add that. Now you can see I'm kind of doing both sides at once. This is coming in a little too strong. Actually, maybe I want it a little more feathered out. But you kind of get the gist. You can see how just these two masks have helped to really shape the light in my image. Let's see if I can toggle the before and after. Before and after. Later, I'm going to show you guys a tip on how you can accentuate light in uh, your frame. Um, but this is how you can kind of darken things down to, um, and again, this is usually a really good idea for the foregrounds and the edges, especially if it's the edge away from where the light is coming in at, to just kind of darken it. It helps to keep your viewer's eye in the center of the frame, looking at your subject. This right here, obviously, is a wildlife photo. This works great for landscapes. It works great for portraits of people. Uh, it really works great for just about any kind of photography where there's like a strong subject. All right, the next trick here, and you guys have definitely heard me talk about this if you've been watching my channel for long, has to do with the contrast, tone curve, all that stuff in your image. If you guys have watched me before, you know I'm a huge advocate to not use that contrast slider. Contrast slider is terrible, guys. Um, I'll show you exactly why. So I increase the contrast slider. You can see these whites get way too punchy. The black gets way too dark. It's just not a good way to add contrast to the image. Rather than do that, I like to use the tone curve. So you scroll down here. Um, for most people, if you haven't used this before, you will have this curve, which is gonna function a little bit different. This one is called the parametric curve. You want to be on the, I think this is called the uh, point curve right here. Difference is this curve doesn't give you, you can click and drag, but it doesn't give you total free reign like this curve does where I can click and create a point anywhere that I want. Now what you're gonna do with this curve 
to create contrast is just add a little S. Now this, if you just add an S where you are increasing the highlights and decreasing the shadows by the same amount, it's doing the same thing as a contrast slider. But this is a lot more powerful because in this scene, I don't want these whites to get too punchy. So I'm actually just gonna barely increase the whites or the highlights in the image. And I'm gonna drop those blacks quite a bit. Now you're probably noticing that the blacks are getting kind of washed out. I'm gonna actually grab this black point on the left and I'm just gonna slide that up. If you go too far, you can see you give your photo this really matte washed out look. So you just wanna bring this up just a hair, just enough to bring back enough detail in the blacks to tell what's going on, but still keep them dark. Now you can see that's how I like to add contrast to my image. Then you can go back through it, of course, and make adjustments up top here with the basic sliders as you see fit. Now the next tip here that I wanna talk about is using the HSL sliders. Now a lot of people, um, we get really obsessed with these saturation sliders. We like saturation because it makes colors more vibrant, uh, makes them pop a little bit more. But I think two really underutilized ways of editing colors is via hue and via luminance. Now on a waterfall image like this where you're in the forest, I wanna show you how I really like to use the hue to create a little color separation. Right now you can see kind of the greens and the yellows all blend together. So what I actually like to do with the hue slider is grab the yellow, move it a little bit towards the left, grab the green, move it a little bit towards the right. Now we toggle that and you can see we've now kind of created a little bit of color separation. You can see kind of yellows in the tree, you can see greens on the leaves and we've just kind of separated those colors a little bit. Now we could go and mess with the saturation if we want, but luminance is really where I do spend a lot of time. And I think a lot of really, really good photographers spend a lot of time using the luminance sliders. This is how you can make your colors pop. Now, the, what the luminance slider does, it increases or decreases the brightness of a particular color. This is different than the saturation, which increases the intensity. Now do keep in mind, as you increase or decrease the luminance, this will also adjust the intensity, or in other words, the saturation of the color. For example, if I grab my greens and I bring it all the way up, you can see how this also affects, it does affect obviously the brightness of the color, but you know, if I slide this more towards white, my colors get a little less saturated. And once I go too far towards black, they get less saturated as well. But when I'm in kind of in the middle, you can see my saturation is a little stronger. So I like to use this to just make my colors pop a little bit. And you can, you know, if I increase the blues a lot of time for water, it'll help to kind of drown out some of those, you know, some of this stuff down here. And I might just tweak this a little bit more. Maybe I want the greens to be darker in this image, but the yellows to be brighter. Now I'll toggle this again. You can see just all we've done here, all I'm toggling is the color mixer. And we've created a lot of color separation in our image here. This is making things look a lot better. So in just a couple minutes using both hue and luminance, you can create a lot of color separation in your image. Really don't sleep on this luminance slider. That being said, you usually don't wanna go all the way to plus 100. You can start to get some weird kind of banding going on in your image, so don't overdo this. But usually anywhere in the you know 30 to 50 to even 60 range is usually pretty good. So that is your HSL sliders. All right now, as promised, I showed you kind of how to take away some light or darken the foreground. I also wanna show you how to add some light into your image. You're gonna go back into your masking tool here and you're going to click the usually radial gradient, but you could also use linear depending on the photo. For this one, I'm gonna use radial. Just gonna click and drag, make sure that feather is pretty high. Um, by default, I think it starts at 50. Usually I like to go a little bit higher just like that, you can move this over. Now, if you wanna see the photo, uncheck show overlay, so then you can move this while being able to see the photo. I probably want it somewhere in there. Now, there's a few different ways to add light. A lot of times I like to add exposure, I like to add warmth, and I like to subtract dehaze, just like that. Now you can also do color. To be totally honest with you guys, I usually do this in Photoshop, so there may be some better ways to do this, but the way that I usually do this is just like this, if I'm going to do it in Lightroom. Just like that. We can expand this out a little bit. I need to get rid of that. And let's just de subtract that dehaze a little bit more. So just kind of open that up and I might want to protect those highlights just a little bit like that. So you can see before and after, before and after. 
can make it a little bit more warm if you want. Just kind of drag this color around until you feel that it's right. Then a lot of times I like to add a second radial gradient and I make this one a little bit smaller and I'll make it really bright. Let's put this right on the corner there. And I'm not don't necessarily want to blow that out totally, but just make it a little bit brighter just to kind of show off. You know, I like to show off there's a really bright spot here that kind of tapers out and adds light as you go across. Now you could really go crazy with this if you wanted to add, you know, another radial gradient and make it even bigger. You can kind of bleed this light into the scene as much as you want. Obviously, depending on the photo, you're going to need to use a different color, maybe a little bit different settings, but you kind of get the gist of how to add light just like that. Now, I want to show you how you can combine this, and this is basically the sixth kind of tip, is combining masks. A lot of people don't understand how to combine masks. I'm actually going to show you on this photo again. Um, the first thing that I want to do, so let's say you want to create some light in this photo. Now, we're going to do the same thing, radial gradient, open it up like that add some exposure, uh, add some warmth, not too much, just a touch, and drop the dehaze a little bit. Let's bring that exposure up a little bit more. This photo already has a good amount of light in it, so it already looks pretty nice. But let's go ahead, make it a little bit better, and let's kind of angle it a little bit. Okay somewhere about in there like that. Now we toggle that. Now the problem is it doesn't look realistic because if the light would be technically behind this moose, it wouldn't be in front of his antler. Now you can combine masks. There's a few different ways to do this. If you want to add to the mask, you hit the add button. And if you want to take away from it, you hit subtract. In this case, we want to take away from it. So we want to subtract and we want to subtract Probably we'll try subject, and I think subject is going to work pretty well. For a photo like this where you've got a sharp subject and a blurry background, it's going to work pretty well. If you're shooting like a traditional landscape where maybe everything is in focus, you may need to do select background or even go in um, with another one of these options here. But for this photo, we are going to do select subject. Now, this is going to subtract the subject, and you can see it already did a pretty nice job. Now, you can see the mask. It didn't do the most amazing job, but it did good enough for what we need now, before, after, before, after. Now you can come in here and you can click on radial gradient and you can continue to adjust this around and it will stay behind the moose because we've subtracted the subject. So that is a really, really nice way to combine your masks together. Um, which is going to help you to create this more realistic looking light when you create that light that's flooding in. Additionally, there's hundreds of different reasons why you might want to combine masks. If you want to remove one part of a mask from something, you can always use a subtract. Or if you want to add something like you saw in this image down here, I added another linear gradient. Sure, I could have created a new mask and created the same effect, but it's nice to just have it all under one roof. You can see with just the local adjustments on this photo, We've really shaped the light so that the light is coming from the left and it's dark on the right side. So that is looking a lot better with just a few quick adjustments to the masking. Hey, thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. If you guys are serious about improving your photography, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm posting weekly videos to help you guys become better photographers. And of course, let me know down below in the comments if these worked for you, if they didn't work for you, if you have any tips of your own or anything like that, I always love hearing from you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Austin James Jackson. Until next time, you guys have a good one.